television news crew is on a stakeout in the Hamptons, an exclusive beach resort not far from New York. They're looking for Warren Anderson, the 81-year-old former chairman of Union Carbide. So there's not really much sign of life. This is all they will see of their quarry. Anderson, who once controlled America's third largest chemicals corporation, now keeps an extremely low profile. Mrs. Anderson? Hello. Is it Mrs. Anderson? Why are you and your husband in hiding? Why won't you talk We're to not in hiding. We don't know anything more than the stories that you people publish. We object to your bothering our neighbors at 8.30 in the morning. That's a private road. Stay off it. But he is facing charges of corporate manslaughter. If he believes he's innocent, why doesn't he, why doesn't he come out and claim his innocence? It, we are talking about the deaths of tens of thousands of people. That's true. Does he not feel responsible at all? He was chairman of the company. It's not as if he, he had nothing to do with this. It was so an when Indian he, managed company. I have nothing to say. But if he's innocent, Excuse why doesn't he come out and talk to us? Please, Mrs. Anderson, just a few moments of your time. Warren Anderson is a wanted man. For more than 10 years, there's been an outstanding warrant for his arrest issued by an Indian court. Anderson was charged with culpable homicide after toxic gas escaped from Union Carbide's pesticide plant in Bhopal in 1984, killing thousands of people. Until recently, it was thought he'd gone into hiding to avoid receiving a court summons. Excuse me, sir, we're looking for Mr. Anderson. But late last year, a Greenpeace activist surprised Anderson in his driveway as he washed his car. After chasing the retired executive across the lawn, he slipped a copy of the arrest warrant through his door. There's now mounting pressure for Anderson's extradition to India. Uh, Warren Anderson is, is sort of being pursued as, as, uh, as an icon, as, as um, the personification of a, of a tragic thing. Uh, it could just as well have been uh, myself if I had been in the CEO job or Warren's predecessor uh, if he had been in the CEO job. So Warren is, is being pursued not, not because of what he did, but because of who he was, the chair he occupied at the time. It's been almost 20 years since Warren Anderson last visited the Indian city of Bhopal, but he's not been forgotten. Every year, as the anniversary of the gas explosion approaches, effigies of the former executive are fashioned out of straw and clay. For many Indians, Anderson has become the embodiment of the corporate criminal, retiring comfortably while they're left to fend for themselves. Apart from causing thousands of deaths, some 150,000 people are still chronically affected by their exposure to the gas, and they blame Anderson for their suffering. The night of December 2nd, 1984, was auspicious in the Hindu calendar, a traditional time for wedding celebrations. Geeta Pandey was partway through her reception when the gas struck. Mm -hmm. 
पता चला सभी लोग बेहोश होने लगे कोई बेहोश होने लगा किसी को उल्टी होने लगी कोई बाहर भागने की कोशिश कर रहा है किसी को कुछ नहीं समझ में आ रहा था उस समय कि ये हो क्या रहा है फिर बाद में उसके बाद तो हम बेहोश हो गए हमें कुछ नहीं मालूम उसके बाद The events, as first described by workers at the plant, began shortly after 11 p.m. that Sunday evening. A number of these men reported smelling MIC gas. This video, produced by Union Carbide, reconstructs some of what happened at the plant that night. Unbeknownst to the workers, a runaway reaction had been triggered as water poured into a tank storing methyl isocyanate, or MIC, a highly volatile and toxic chemical. Then at 12:15 a.m., the control room operators said they checked the tank pressure and saw it rising. Within 15 minutes, rumbling sounds were heard coming from tank 610. Heat began radiating from the ground. The concrete platform began cracking, and at approximately 12:45 a.m., the screeching through the safety valve signaled the terrifying release. The next two hours, 50,000 pounds of a poisonous methyl isocyanate gas enveloped most of the older sections of Bhopal. of gas struck without warning. It ate away at its victims' lungs and throats, causing hemorrhaging, muscular convulsions, and blindness. Rashida B remembers the terrified stampede to escape the gas. हमारे जो पापा थे उनका वहीं खून की उल्टी हुई उनको और वो वहीं बैठ गए बेहोशी की हालत में उनको भी वैसे ही छोड़के हम लोग भागे और लोगों के कपड़े खराब हो गए थे पाखाना निकल गया था पिसाब निकल गया था और बस लोग मांग मौत मांग रहे थे किसी तरह से हमें मौत आ जाए हमारा दम निकल जाए बस It's impossible to say for sure how many died that night and during the days that followed. Whole families were wiped out, leaving no one to report their passing. The official death toll is 3,800, but evidence suggests the real figure is more like 8 to 10,000. In the midst of this nightmare, Gita and her family completed the wedding rituals. सभी लोग घबराए हुए थे उसमें, पर कैसा लगा सबके मन की अलग-अलग प्रतिक्रिया थी ससुराल वालों को तो न जाने कैसा कैसा लग रहा था कि कहाँ से कहाँ क्या हुआ, पर When doctors called Union Carbide's medical officer in Bhopal, they were told the leaked gases were similar to tear gas, essentially harmless, and those who were suffering simply needed to rinse their eyes with water. 